Someone asked me at a conference I went to recently, uh, who are you? What do you do? I made a conscious choice to answer truthfully without sort of giving into resume. You know, I said, my name is Dell. I'm a creator. I create all kinds of things. I, I'm hopefully creating great environments for my students because I am a teacher. I'm hopefully creating good art because I hope to consider myself an artist. I'm hopefully creating good content because I'm a producer and a director of theater and a maker of YouTube videos. And I hope that I am also a good creator of moments as a performer because I'm also an actor. I also hope to be socially responsible because <clears throat> I care about people and the environment and my fellow worker. I am a member of the National Actors Union called Actors Equity Association. And I thought I'd tell you the quick story of how I got my equity card and how it relates back to taking students to see a show this weekend. Several years ago, the Dallas Theater Center and the Portland Center Stage were doing a co-production of My Fair Lady. It was a, going to be a unique production where they were only casting 10 people. So basically, I think, as I recall, uh, Henry Higgins, Eliza, and Colonel Pickering were played by actors who that's all they played. And then the other seven of us, as I recall, played multiple characters throughout the show. From uh, buskers in the flower district to society snobs at the Ascot race. They were holding auditions and uh, traditionally, you know, for a show like that, they would cast in New York and they didn't, uh, they didn't necessarily use a lot of local talent. I wanted to use it as an opportunity to get some former students of mine who were living in the Dallas area to come out and audition. And it's kind of easy to audition for Dallas Theater Center because we weren't equity and B, they weren't casting the show from Dallas, so there's really no pressure. So you get to kind of go, go to an equity audition, have a little fun, do your thing, and then we go to lunch. Knowing that there's really zero risk involved, except I have to prepare an audition and be seen by someone that you'll never see again, ever. So I made some appointment to, to meet a former student there and we were gonna go audition. I get to the venue, the former student doesn't show. Uh, no big deal, and I thought, well, since I'm here and I've prepared, I'm gonna audition. They didn't even have a piano in the room. You were just singing a cappella, and that was all you're doing is singing 16 bars. And I treated myself to a nice lunch afterwards. About two weeks later, I get a phone call. It says, hey, we'd like you to come back down and audition again, and this time bring your sheet music because we're gonna have somebody to play with you. And I went, okay, crazy. Go down, audition, it was no big deal, ran in, did my piece, they ran in and out, hey, thanks a lot, thanks for coming. Great. How fun and how nice that they called people back and that was sweet. Because I was the only person in the room and so that was super. Lo and behold, another couple of weeks go by and I get another phone call. And they're like, we'd like you to audition for the director. What? Okay. The director was Richard Hamburger and so he's like, really great director and I thought okay well great I definitely want to audition for him there is still zero chance I'm getting in the show for a number of reasons uh, so I actually coerced a colleague of mine who was the head of our musical theater program at the time to come be my pianist and I said look I'll take you to lunch at really someplace nice in Dallas come with me and so we went down I said I've brought my own accompanist if that's all right and they went oh yeah it's fine and so she came in, we hammed it up, had a good time, laughed, uh, and did the piece. And they talked and talked, and they had us do readings and sides. And then about a week later, I'm with my students at a conference in Tulsa. Uh, I got a phone call that says, we'd like you to consider auditioning one more time. We really would like our casting to see you. And I said, well, I'm at a conference this weekend. I can't. And then next weekend, I go to New York. What do you mean you're going to be in New York? I'm going to be in New York next weekend. We're going to be in New York next weekend, says the casting director. What? Can you stop by while you're in New York and audition for our New York casting person? <laughs> yes? Great! So, I'm now in New York City. I'm there for an alumni event with my students who now live in New York. And they're like, what are you doing? What sites are you going to go see? Oh, well, I've got an audition while I'm in town. What? Yes, I've got an audition while I'm in town. I go to the audition. I have a good time. Long story short, sorry. And they want to offer me a role as one of the people who plays lots of different roles. I was like, are you kidding me? It was great. I 
I have to speak to my university that I work at and and say, okay, so here's this opportunity to be in an equity production. It pretty much means I'm going to be gone most of the semester. And to their credit, the university and my dean were like, uh, yeah, of course you should do it. Uh, we'll work it out. And so I did it. I did the show. I had a great time. We rehearsed and ran in Portland. Then we moved the show to Dallas and performed at Dallas Theater Center and had a great time there. Fast forward a decade later, and I'm at Dallas Theater Center this weekend with some of my students in my directing class, taking them down to see a double bill of uh, School for Wives and Medea happening on the same day with pretty much the same actors and the same director. Two completely different shows. It was amazing. Well, we're in the lobby kind of hanging out between shows, and they have all these pictures from shows of the past and everything. And I'm walking down the stairs, and there, lo and behold, at the bottom of the stairs is this picture. Yeah. The big goofy guy with the hat? That's me. I had no idea that picture. I had never even seen pictures from this show. Um, and so there I am in that glorious set. That's a set. That's not. They built the set to look like the balconies of sort of an Edwardian kind of theater. It was amazing. The floor would actually, kind of like a conveyor belt, roll on and off in both directions off the stage and so they could put scenery on over here unbeknownst and then as it rolled on there was the scenery and there was like a like in between the two slip stages there was like 16 inches of safe zone that you could hop onto that and not be like doing the splits and it was amazing and so once again there I am yeah pretty cool right and my students were like you're famous and I went well, I'm in a show <laughs> and that show was filled with fantastic people but the most amazing person in that cast was a wonderful actor uh, named David Coffey. And I am proud to have worked with him. He is a um, um, just a great working actor who works all over the country. He is a sweet, sweet, genuine, likable fellow. Super talented. Tells the greatest stories. And I just, you know, could listen to him talk forever. There's another whole part to that story that's very interesting, but I don't feel like telling it yet. I'll come back to it and tell that story. There may be a follow-up video, maybe this month. Talk to you later. Bye.